You right. know things I don't care about? The moon? The moon. The moon's awesome. It's lovely up there. I'm so, I was so over everyone talking about the fucking moon. Oh, I hear you, Gus. That's why I decided to do this entire video about the moon. The lunar eclipse. Go ahead. Like Where the, the Earth eclipses the moon. Doesn't that happen every day? <sighs> so there's one every, every month. Seems like that would happen all the freaking time. Yeah. Maybe a lot of times, maybe it happens over like unpopulated areas or the ocean. So we'll start off real basic. What is a lunar eclipse? I know you know, but do you? Do you really? Real quick, a lunar eclipse is when the shadow of the Earth totally or partially covers the moon. Easy, right? I sure hope so, because it only gets harder from here. So there are three types of lunar eclipses, total, partial, and penumbral. The classification relies on which part of the Earth's shadow is covering the moon. There are two components to Earth's shadow. The darkest, most central part is called the umbra. The penumbra is a less dark shadow that fans out at an angle. When the entirety of the umbra covers the moon, it is referred to as a total lunar eclipse. A penumbral lunar eclipse occurs when the sun, moon, and Earth's orbits are aligned in such a way that the moon is covered by the... If you've been paying attention, you'd know where I'm going with this. The penumbra. Good job. A partial eclipse is when Earth's umbra only covers a portion of the moon. So now that we know what an eclipse is, let's move on. So on September 27th, the total lunar eclipse cast the moon in a dark red shadow. The blood moon. So why is it red? The Earth's shadow on the moon is red for the same reason that sunsets and sunrises are red. As light passes through the atmosphere, the shorter wavelengths of light have been scattered by particles in the atmosphere through a process called Rayleigh scattering. Here's a fun fact. This is also why the sky is blue. Photons of the blue wavelength are scattered by particles in the atmosphere that are roughly one-tenth the size of their wavelength. So this process leaves the longer, redder wavelengths to continue on, hence the blood moon. Hope I didn't lose you there. What is really interesting about that is, if an astronaut were standing on the moon at the time of a lunar eclipse, he or she would see a red ring around the Earth as it eclipsed the sun, and would be seeing all of the sunsets and sunrises of the Earth all at once. So now, let's address Gavin's burning question. Why aren't there lunar eclipses every month? Well, it so happens that Cornell University's Ask an Astronomer addresses this exact question, saying, they do not happen every month because the Earth's orbit around the Sun is not in the same plane as the Moon's orbit around the Earth. The Moon's orbit around the Earth is not completely planar. The Moon's orbit is actually tilted, on average 5.1 degrees. Now, while they don't happen every month, eclipses do happen two to four times per year. A large portion of these are penumbral, which are hard to see with the naked eye. The conditions have to be just right for a total lunar eclipse to occur like the one on September 27th, so they are much less frequent. So. Hopefully you've all learned something, and now have one less science topic to fuck up on the podcast. I got it wrong. What you're on saying that. is 100% correct. What you're saying is 100% correct.